The magic island is sinking into the ocean. It is sinking at the will of G-47 and the scientists, however, and no one inside the artificial island is in any danger. The strange isle of Euclidia is being submerged below the surface of the sea in order to permit a large fleet of battleships to hold maneuvers over it without suspecting the existence of the island. The Gregory yacht has been drawn into a submarine lock under the surface of the island, and Mrs. Gregory, Captain Bradford, and Jerry and Joan discuss the situation in the radio cabin of the yacht. You said the Euclidians could destroy a battle fleet easily and quickly, Joan. Why don't they destroy this one? I think there's a very good reason. You know what it is, do you not, Captain Tex? It's got me, Joan. I may be a little stupid after my long swim, but I can't see it. Well, the only reason I can think of is that this crazy bunch aren't quite ready to start destroying battleships or warships. But I don't see what they're waiting for. Captain Bradford, you realize that those battleships are almost upon us. They will be over this position in an hour, if what you heard the guard say is true. I know that, Joan, but how did those ships get so close? Hey, I'm beginning to get it. They let those ships get within range on purpose, didn't they, Joan? Of course, Jerry. But why? I got it, Captain. They must have seen those battleships coming for the last 200 miles or more. And the reason they didn't make any move to stop them was because they didn't want anybody to suspect this island. They wanted you to get out that pigeon. Then they figured to stop the pigeon and get the formula. You are exactly right, Jerry. These Euclidians have great patience, and they will have many more chances to destroy battleships, while this was their last chance to get the captain's formula. But they've missed their chance anyhow. The pigeon got away, and the ships are too near for them to go after the pigeon. Yes, Mother, and G-47 will not attack those ships without the captain's formula, for he is not sure the formula has not found its way to friendly hands already. And in that event, Euclidia would live a very short life. Boy, that's almighty keen for us, isn't it, Tex? It sure is, son. That little pigeon is well on his way to Johnson's boat now. And if this battle fleet stays around these waters for a few hours, long enough for the pigeon to reach Johnson's boat, and for Johnson to start running back to Los Angeles, we're as good as off this island now. Out of it, you mean? We're inside the blame thing now. We are quite safe in here. There is nothing to worry about. But... Inside this lock, we must be ten feet below the surface of the water now. How about the air? The air is kept fresh from oxygen tanks in the base of the island. There is enough compressed oxygen there to feed every chamber on the island a normal flow of pure air if we were submerged for a month. And even after that, for they have machinery for getting the oxygen out of the water around us. Golly, whiskers. Well, Tex, it seems that we are comparatively safe at least. Though it's a strange feeling to be on board a yacht that's floating below the surface of the ocean. Yes, we're all right until G-47 decides to do something to us. And when he decides that the pigeon is safely on its way, I think he'll begin to do things. Tell us what happened to you, Captain. When the lock gates to the ocean were closed, we thought you had been caught outside the lock. It was terrible, Tex, to feel the yacht being submerged and thinking of you out there, helpless when the island went under also. Well, I was inside the lock before they closed the gate. But I floated out near the end of the pier for a while to hear what the guards were talking about. That's how I got the information on the battle fleet coming. But how did you come aboard here? That's what I can't see. Well, when you were all looking forward at the lock gates opening into the island, I sneaked along the deck and in here. I was afraid to attract your attention for fear you'd give me away. Then when the mast was knocked over on the cabin roofs, you put out the lights so we could enter the cabin without exposing you. That was very clever, Captain. It was wonderful, Tex. And now we're all together again. Yeah, we're all together again. But I got a sneaking notion our troubles are getting ready to get together, too. What's up, kid? Well, for one thing, the radio smashed. How much damage was done? You mean when the mast fell and broke your antenna cables? Yes, Joan. That wouldn't hurt the set here any. But without an aerial and shielded by this metal lock, I'm afraid we haven't much of a radio left. G-47 and his transmission engineers do not use aerials. Yet their apparatus will send and receive messages much farther than your equipment. Sure. They build their sets to work without aerials. And they've got electricity to burn. We've only got portable stuff. Well, turn it on, Jerry. Open it wide now and leave it hot. We might pick up something to listen to. Okay. I'll warm it up. But I looked at the winding, and this set wasn't made to do much without an aerial. What does that mean, Joan, dear? That was the alarm gone, wasn't it? Yes, Mother. That means to stand by all stations. I think they will submerge the island now. Will it affect us any in this lock? I think not. At least not until the oxygen supply is turned on. 
Then the air will feel sharp when you inhale it. That will be the only thing noticeable, I'm sure. How deep will we go, dear? I think to the bottom, if we are to clear heavy ships. And how far down is the bottom? The island can be submerged to more than half its own depth. The airlock in the ocean floor is 60 feet deep, and the island is only 100 feet in height. So if we submerge completely, the surface of the island will be 50 to 60 feet below the water line. That sounds mighty big to us, Joan. I'd like to see it done. Would they allow that, do you think, dear? I have seen it many times. Most of the locks have one transparent wall so that you may look out into the water and study the natural life on the ocean floor. I got the set hot text, but nothing doing. I've tried every wavelength. Got it on Johnson now, but I can't even raise a signal from any of those boats around us here. Well, we better go to work on that set, kid. Our only hope is to have some way of hearing from Johnson when the pigeon gets to his boat. signal to submerge. Now the island will sink slowly into the sea, and in a few moments we will be many feet below the surface of the ocean. That signal has a heavy, resonant, vibrating quality. Mightn't it be heard for many miles around? I wondered about that too, Pat. Those battleships have plenty of underwater ears. They can hear a sub a long way off. No, Captain. The Euclidians have controlled that in some way. The sound stops at the magnetic ring and does not rise above the surface of the island. Old G-47 sure thinks of everything, and then some. I wish we could see what's going on. It would be wonderful to look up through the water and see a fleet maneuver from below. What's that for, Joan? The island has sunk to the first level, ten feet below the water. That would mean that the little steel control chambers you saw on top of the island are just going underwater now. They didn't get under any too soon, either. Those ships must be within 20 miles of here by now. Come in. Oh, you. I might have known it. Gee whiz, now the cat's out of the bag. Tex, you shouldn't have said come in so carelessly. You need not reproach the captain. I have known for some time he was aboard. I should have thought of that. Of course you knew it when you could not find him swimming near the island. Precisely. What do you want here? Nothing here. You will come with me, Captain Bradford. You also, Cleostra. Follow me immediately. Are you going to show them something? No. I am going to put them where they can see nothing. Was that the second level? Are we now 20 feet below the sea? Precisely. Captain, Cleostra, come quickly. And what if we don't care to come? Captain, do you not see that ray gun in his hand? We will do as you wish, G-47. Joan's right, Tex. Jerry and I will be all right here. Go with him and do as he says. That's the spirit, Mrs. Gregory. They can't scare us. You make up in stupidity what you lack in fear. Go. I will follow you. Keep your chin up, Pat. Take care of her, Jerry. Come on, Joan. Yes, Captain. We will go. I might remind you, Mrs. Gregory, that I expect you and this young fool to remain quietly on the yacht. Your friends will return when I have finished with them. Jerry, what's he going to do with Tex and Joan? Now, don't worry, Mrs. Gregory. He's not going to do anything to them. Only you put them where they can't see what's going on. But why them and not us? Well, he figures you and I ain't any too heavy on brains, I guess. Why, Jerry? Well, well, I mean, he's afraid Joan will get a chance to do something because she knows all about this island. And he knows Tex is liable to see some way to get an alarm to those boats. I guess he thinks you and I just sit in here and cry. The third level. This is quite an experience, Jerry. Plenty for me. But what I'm most worried about is that this radio won't work. And I got a notion there's nothing wrong with a set. It's all in the aerial. And this steel lock isn't helping me any. What was that? The anchor chain ran out and dropped the stern hook on the steel floor of this lock. Of course. The skipper must have released it in trying to clear away the broken mast. Well... 
It won't hurt anything. J-12C calling J-24Y. It's Johnson. The set's working again. Listen. Oh, nothing more, Jerry. Well, never mind. We'll keep the set open. Maybe he'll come in again. Now we're down to the fourth level, Jerry. There should be only one more of those alarms. Yeah. I wonder where G-47 took Joan and Captain Bradford. J-12C calling J-24Y. J-12C standing by. We'll stay here indefinitely. Standing by. J-12C will repeat every quarter hour. J-12C J-24Y. That is all. Oh, Jerry, he, he's standing by. Johnson's arrived at the position north of us. Then he's within range of the pigeon tech sent off. That's swell. All we gotta do now is hang on and wait. Oh, how about it? Can't do any harm, Jerry. Come in. Oh, come on in, Skipper. And close the door. Aye. Uh, What's on your mind, Skipper? Anchor. Yes, Skipper, we heard it drop. Did it do any damage? Radio. What about the radio? Aerial. Was the aerial tangled in the anchor chain? Aye. Gosh, then thanks for letting the anchor run out and hitting the bottom. Why? Because we didn't have any aerial at all till that happened. Don't you see, Skipper? The anchor's the aerial now. It's touching the bottom of this steel lock, and the aerial's mixed up with it. Leave that anchor on the bottom, Skipper, and the aerial wire mixed up with a chain. We've got this whole island for an aerial now. Mm. 